If any style of circuit suits me as a driver, it'd be the tight, technical layouts with a stop-start nature that requires an aggressive touch on the inputs. So, you can imagine my excitement ahead of the 2023 Season 3 build when iRacing announced that Willow Springs International Raceway was coming to the simulator, as this circuit features absolutely none of what I just described. Nestled into the Californian desert, Willow Springs is a simplistic circuit on paper at just 4km long and featuring just 9 corners. But where this circuit can throw up some surprises is the radius and complexity of those nine corners, with many featuring tightening or opening radii that are all uniquely different to one another, with positive and negative banking on the road surface featuring throughout the lap as well. But suppose all of that wasn't enough to quite convince you that these nine corners are a challenge. In that case, it should be noted just how much elevation change there is around this course, particularly on the exit of turn 6 where cars will get extremely light, happily snapping out from underneath the driver. Graphically, the circuit is absolutely gorgeous, with landmarks littered all around the circuit finding the way onto the sim, such as the Budweiser barrels on the exit of turn 4, fully animated Marshall posts and even some older and rusted cars within the pit paddock. Adding to this, iRacing has finally implemented their new foliage system for the first time on a circuit despite it first being teased over two years ago. Longer and more dense grass and shrubs populate the circuit's infield, creating a greater sense of Willow Springs' unique environment. The feature is extremely taxing on the frame rate though, with my 2080 Ti barely able to hold 60 frames per second with max foliage even on a reduced 1080p resolution. The end is near for those of us with weak computers. Whilst on the subject of track graphics, it's worth mentioning that this circuit does not feature any night lighting at all, so any racing around here in the dark will be a terrifying prospect. Despite Willow Springs' somewhat barren environment, be prepared to have a rough time with frame rates at this venue. Whilst Willow Springs does feature multiple layouts in the real world, sadly on the sim we currently only have the Big Willow layout. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't missing the Horse Thief Mile layout which has featured in several games across the years, most memorably for me in Need for Speed Pro Street. The circuit can be seen just on the outside of turn 8 of the Big Willow layout, but just by looking at the track surface and surroundings of the course, I'm doubtful the course was laser scanned and that we'll ever see the Horse Thief Mile make its way onto the sim as a drivable option. Taking a lap around Willow Springs, we blast down the front straight towards the high speed turn 1. You'll notice that you won't struggle for braking markers here with plenty of billboards and landmarks on your left and right. I've been using a little tarmac patchwork on the ground to start slowing down for this turn, bearing in mind this corner is quite cambered so as long as you turn in early enough to benefit from the banking, you can carry a fair bit more corner speed than you might otherwise expect. Be sure not to touch the inside curbing here as it is counterbanked to the corner and will cause a horrific bounce to the mid corner, ruining your exit speed. You can use all of the road on the exit here, but the priority in this sequence of the lap is ensuring you can get back to the left of the circuit before turn 2. Turn 2 is also banked but to a far lesser degree, but that's not the real challenge here. Turn 2 is a horrifically long corner that feels like it will never end. If you are a front left tyre around this circuit, my condolences to you and your family. Turn 2 will not be flat out in almost any car, so learning the limit of what your vehicle is capable of is critical here. It is nearly impossible to define an optimal line, braking or acceleration point for all cars on the simulator for this turn, so th my best advice really? Take it slow initially and eventually build up your mid corner speed over a couple of laps until you start drifting wide at the corner's end. Such is the length of this corner for those wondering, a Formula V will take 14 seconds to navigate this corner fully. Corners don't get much longer than that. The next four corners all flow into one another with a constant focus on setting yourself up for the next corner. Turn 3 has minimal references for braking, with your best bet being the markings on the tarmac. The entry to turn 3 has both a steep incline and banking to it, so you can afford to break a little late and still get away with it, but the optimal line will come from a late apex here straight up the run into turn 4. Avoiding the inside curbs will be critical here just like it was in turn 2 with the counterbanked curbs. The car will also be extremely rear limited as you drive over the crest between these two corners, created by the corner banking transitioning from a left to a right handed corner. In cars without trash control and with high power, this is a surefire way to have a high speed spin if you do not get the car settled nice and early. 
to prevent this, holding at least some throttle on the entire way through this section to create a weight shift to the rear of the car will help with stability and be very crucial. Turn 4 is another long and tricky corner where you'll aim for a late apex again. This corner is particularly unique in the fact that the entry phase of this corner is entirely uphill before it falls away after the apex into a pretty steep decline. This means the car will be susceptible to inside front locking here if you try to brake too hard, so coasting the vehicle in on a lower brake percentage before mashing the throttle on exit using the elevation to your advantage will likely be key here. The road is quite bumpy offline here, so if you do overshoot your braking slightly, be prepared to wait on the throttle just a little bit to avoid getting unsettled. Turn 5's braking zone takes place on the same downward slope, so unlike the other corners before it, you may find the braking distances are slightly longer here, and that like Turn 4, it'll be straightforward to lock an inside front tyre due to the banking of the road causing the inside tyre to drop off the ground initially. Keeping a tight line here will be very important as you want to sacrifice your entry and mid fades of this left hand corner to fully set up your exit speed due to a very high speed section coming up. The compression in the road as it dips down before immediately going uphill once more should aid traction as the car gets forced into the ground so you should be able to smash the accelerator to the floor without hesitation. Turn 6 in some cars will be a cakewalk while it will be pretty challenging in others. This corner's apex occurs in the middle of a crest, so the vehicle will get very light at the most critical point. This can result in high speed snap oversteer or even lifting the front wheels off the ground temporarily and causing you to run wide, slaughtering your exit speed onto the faster section of the circuit. Keep the car as tight to the right as possible before the crest, as this will provide you with the path of least resistance and put you on the less steep side of the hill. Just be wary that clipping the inside curb here could cause the vehicle to bounce violently, which will only get amplified as you go over the crest. Whilst a simple corner on paper, plenty can go wrong here in a big way. Turn 7 is simply a left kink in the straight, so we can skip straight to turn 8, which, a little like turn 6, can either be just another kink in the straight, or it can be quite a challenge. One example of a car that struggles through this section is the Australian V8 supercar which suffers from tremendous understeer through this corner and therefore cannot take the corner without lifting. Meanwhile other cars like a Le Mans prototype or even a GT3 car will take this corner flat out without even thinking about it. Regardless of what you're driving, this is by far the quickest corner on the circuit so be sure to tie up those belts before turning in. The final corner on the circuit is also one of the most difficult with a very difficult to spot entry, no braking references and no margin for error here. If you dip a tyre into the dirt on turn in here, you will never recover the car. You'll be dragged out into the void and dumping several seconds of lap time in a heartbeat. That is, if you don't get launched off into the outside wall, so be aware you're playing with fire every time you come up to this section. Trust the car will stick on entry with a delicate touch on the brakes, coasting the car into the corner to keep a little weight on the front tyres to ensure you can turn in enough, but don't brake hard enough to totally shift the weight forward and turn the rear of the car into a pendulum. Ideally, start picking the throttle up long before you arrive at the apex as the tightest phase of the corner is actually at the entry and the corner will gradually open up on the exit. That completes a lap at this ultra high speed 4km circuit. I hope this turn by turn snapshot of the circuit gives you a better idea of how unique and challenging the circuit is despite its simplistic appearance of a track map. This circuit will thrive in higher power GT cars or cars that draft pretty well in a pack but perhaps not best suited to the ultimate speed of an open wheel or prototype class car. Despite its 15 US dollar cost, this circuit is an excellent pickup for most sim racers as it provides a great challenge and phenomenally close racing with no shortage of places to pass, especially in a draft. It is pretty easy to learn with its 9 corners, so it's excellent for a D class or a C class schedule, especially given the track width throughout the layout. So, all that remains to be answered now is will you guys be buying the circuit? Let me know down in the comments below.